What's up YouTube? Today I would like to present to you Catalyst, my new Snap Heap preset pack. Before we dive too far into the video, something that I am doing differently with this release than pretty much any of my other ones is I am offering a demo version for free. The demo version is a pack of phase plant presets which use a lot of the Snap Heap presets in them. I kind of designed them as templates to show you how to use them in context. So I'm going to go through a couple of those face plant presets in this video, as well as show you the snappy preset pack. So if you don't have the cash to go for the full snappy preset pack, you can always just grab the free version for face plant. I want to post all the links in the description. So Catalyst consists of several categories of preset styles, ranging from complex or automatic transition making presets to creative effects and filters, glitchy mangling mayhem, and even some mixing templates to get your project started very quickly. So let's quickly take a look at the different types of presets that we have in the Snap Heap bank. So as you can see, I've basically divided these into five different categories. We've got the transitions, which are then further divided into three subcategories. Automatic, which is basically all the stuff happening for you. All you need to do is turn it on and turn it off. Then we have basic and complex transitions, which have various different parameters which you can tweak to create your own unique and interesting transitions for your tracks. Then we have the mangler categories. So these are divided again into two subcategories. Here I basically divided them because of CPU usage. Some of these are very heavy on the CPU. so. You know, if some of you maybe don't have very intense computers, then maybe you want to consider, uh, you know, bouncing some of these. But the reason I put them into separate folders is just to make it easier in terms of workflow. Sometimes you want to flip through presets and not have it like chug your computer every time you're flipping through those presets. So that's why I've divided those into another two subcategories. The rest of the stuff is creative effects, which is basically a bunch of custom reverbs, delays, all sorts of interesting things like that. There's even my beat repeat effect in there. Then we have filters, which is a bunch of either basic like uh, filters, which are based on actual model synthesizers or all sorts of other interesting utility stuff like a DJ filter which sweeps from high to low and that kind of thing and then we have mixing which is just a bunch of templates to get your project started very quickly okay let's have a quick look at some of the presets in the phase plant preset pack so this is basically the bonus or the demo preset pack so first up we have this pad sound um, and as you can see like I said um, this uses a lot of the presets from the snappy pack as you can see we've got three presets that are loaded from the pack and you know, like I was explaining about the whole filter thing, we can actually cycle through various of these different filters by just using the up and down arrows over here. And because I've categorized them into the folders, they're going to only cycle through the different uh, categories that are kind of meaningful for that part of the effects chain. Does that make sense? So you can think of it as the different categories of the snappy pack as the transitions, the manglers and then a just a set of kind of modular effects that you can use throughout your chain. So this is the sound itself. I'm just going to hold one note. Obviously, because that sound is a little bit more complex, I want to show you on a bit of a simpler sound exactly what I was talking about with regards to the filter thing. So check here, we have modulation attached to this uh, filter over here for this lead sound. Okay, so we have a lead sound. So now watch what happens as I cycle through the different filter models that I've created here. And 
And with these presets, anytime that there is randomization happening on a filter, I've created a system which I call a super macro. I'm not sure if you've seen my video on this, but it's where you can disable the filter modulation as you sweep the curve up. So watch how it's randomly modulating, but then as we start tweaking the filter, that random modulation stops occurring on the filter and it allows us to actually tweak it ourselves. So this is cool for you know creating sweeps and then having random uh, articulations within the sweep. Check this out. Okay, this is another great example for ambient or background atmospheres and stuff for your track. Okay, the last things I want to show you from the faceplant part of this are the sound effects. So these are based on the Mangler presets. So like I said, these are just weird, glitchy things, which are actually great for, you know, sources of inspiration. If you just resample these, you can chop them and get all sorts of weird textures and stuff um, out of this kind of thing. Okay, so I'm at this point with this track, which I'm sure a lot of you get to with your productions, where it's just looping and it's looping and it sounds great, but you just can't think of anything to take it to the next part in the arrangement. You can't think of anything to transition it. Uh, and this is basically one of the reasons why I created this pack, is because I find having tools to quickly create these transitions just makes the inspiration and the creativity flow much quicker. So let's look at a couple of examples of these transition presets. Firstly, I want to look at the automatic ones, and then we can look at the basic and complex. So you can kind of fine tune your own transitions. Okay, so like I said, the automatic uh, transitions are basically designed to just be like an on and off thing. If you wanted to do the transition, you turn it on. And if you don't, you turn it off. Some of them have kind of basic parameters which you can fine tune. For example, with this one, if you want to add the reverb wash at the end, then that's this parameter. And you can kind of tune how much of that you want, basically.
So the basic transitions are designed to be used in combination with some of the other stuff in the project. You can use them just on their own if you want just a quick transition. The other cool thing about these is they're not just, you know, wash outs into the next part. You can use these to wash out and then wash back in again to create these kind of breakdowns and bridges in your track. So there's a couple of examples here which are really good at that. This uh, low pass distortion one and this rubidium. Let me show you the effects that these have. Okay, so then let's have a look at some of these complex examples. So these are basically have a bunch of parameters which you can fine tune, you can kind of filter it in, filter it out. And then you also have control over the actual transition effect itself. So yeah, let's have a listen to some of these examples. Okay, let's look at some of the mixing templates. So I've got a track here, which um, I've prepared. Actually, one of my favorite uh, things here is this perk source preset. So this has a couple of things. One, uh, which basically just applies, I, I guess there's almost like an LFO tool to just tighten up the envelopes of pretty much any percussion or any sound that's running through it. Um, and then there's various other parameters which you can dial in so again, these uh, mixing presets are very context dependent. So it's not going to just, you know, slap it on your track and make it sound better. But I often end up doing these types of processes to percussion a lot. So I figured it would be cool to have it, you know, all in one preset so I can kind of just throw it on there, tweak a few settings and rather than having to load up a bunch of different plugins and that kind of thing. Does that make sense? So this is the before and after. So this kind of thing, it's pretty subtle. I mean, like, it's obvious that there's an effect, but it doesn't really make as much of a difference to the sound uh, in terms of the overall theme of the song, if that makes sense, like, until you actually hear it in context. Do you know what I mean? Then you can hear, okay, now the transients are peeking through much nicer and that kind of thing. So there's also one here that I've got called bass source. So this is a similar thing, you know, it's like, it's not just gonna work on every bass sound that you have but I end up using a lot of these same processes on my bass. So having them all within a single preset has just, you know, helped me a lot to be able to, you know, do everything within a single preset. Again, this even has something like LFO tool pre-baked with the same curve that I end up doing pretty often.
So there's various other stuff here. I don't want to give away too much, obviously, but there is another one here that I quickly just want to talk about. So this one called Quick Master, this is even more context dependent than any of the mixing racks. So this is not going to just master your track and make it sound better, but I like using this to give myself a quick reference of what my track might sound like closer to being mastered. Does that make sense? So again, it's a lot of the same tasks that I use in mastering kind of all linked up so that I can just throw this on there, tweak a few settings and get it right very quickly. So let's try to do that. Let's see if we can master this track with just a few tweaks of the buttons. Again, like I said, this is for reference purposes only. Don't just you know, process this on your tracks and think it's gonna sound mastered. Just for reference, just for production to get that creativity flowing much quicker. Okay, so the last thing I wanna talk about is how quick it is to make your own presets using a bunch of these kind of modular little uh, preset systems that I've created. So what I'm gonna do is open up an instance of Phaseplant. What we can do is we can just add an oscillator. Okay, so what I usually do is I will add a snap heap and then I will just duplicate it like twice. And so here, for example, we can use this one to choose from one of the filters. So let's say, for example, a state variable filter. So what this is, is basically a system which switches between band pass, low pass and high pass. And you've got variable pole settings as well. Okay, so for now, let's just put a random modulator, just smooth it out, and let's put this onto the frequency, cutoff frequency over here, just to keep some movement going in the patch while we create the rest of the stuff. So here, for example, we can create like a different effect. So let's have a look at some of the creative effects over here. So there's various things we can do. This verb stack is pretty interesting. We could create like a shimmer effect over here. Uh, this multi-tap delay is also really interesting. Super cool for creating immersive psychedelic delay effects. And then here, let's just top it off with a little bit of shimmer. Damn, that's so nice, I don't wanna change it. But just for this example, let's just change it. So what we could do is we could cycle through the filters to try to find a better filter. And same with the other effects. So for example, we could, you know, try find like maybe use the dub delay effect. This has a really nice tape stop, which I've simulated. So it kind of like uses the envelopes to actually stop the tape. So it's a nice way of creating like a dub delay that does a kind of time shift but like actually within your patch, you know, with this kind of thing, I've always had to render it out and do it afterwards. Mm -hmm. 
awesome. That is about all that we have time for for today. I hope you guys enjoyed that. A big thanks for the support. If you are considering grabbing this pack, remember there is a demo version. If you don't have the cash to grab the full version, you can get the phase plant presets, uh, which use a lot of these uh, presets from the Snappy pack. So anyway, let me know what you guys think in the comments. Don't forget to hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. I will see you guys next time. Cheers.